watching that on occasion, the first lady we think we see is actually a body double. Here to clear this all up for us is uh, White House reporter Kate Bennett. Uh, Kate, how did this all start? Where did this come from? Well, it's like one of those classic conspiracy theories that just takes off on the internet. There's a gentleman who has several thousand followers who on Twitter claimed put two pictures of her, of Melania Trump, side by side and said, this isn't the same person. It can't be. Um, it, it is the same person. There's no body double. It took a couple of days for this to spread like wildfire, but eventually all these conspiracy theories came up. The White House did respond to me about this. They completely denied it. Uh, Melania, Trump's spokesperson, just said it was a ridiculous story. Uh, we find ourselves consumed with a ridiculous non-story when we could be talking about the work the First Lady is doing to help children. So clearly, it's not a thing. Um, it just took off. It just took off, and when it takes off, sometimes there's no bringing the, the train back to the station. Right. Um, and helping to fuel the story is that the First Lady happens to have a Secret Service agent who looks a bit like her, right? She does. Her lead agent is a woman um, who, who, and her face does look like her. So as this conspiracy theory grew, of course, people were finding pictures of, of this agent in the background and saying, okay, that's the double. The Secret Service does not use body doubles. Uh, the woman in question, the agent, has nothing, was not chosen because she looks like her. Um, the Secret Service doesn't do that. I spoke with a, a source there. So this is, again, another sort of component to this conspiracy theory. And I will say... You know, Melania Trump has a little bit maybe, not to blame for this, but it's easier to see that people don't know her that well, mm -hmm. even nine months into her husband's presidency. Uh, we're not as familiar with her, seeing her, hearing from her. She's a little more mysterious um, than past first ladies of recent history, so it becomes a, probably a little bit easier for these sorts of rumors and conspiracy theories to take off. And on Friday, as you know, she took part in the century-old tradition of donating her inaugural gown to the Smithsonian, but it wasn't that long ago that some designers were refusing to dress her because of her husband's policy. Um, has that, policies I should say, has that relationship with the fashion world changed at all considering that recent polls show that she's experienced a surge in popularity over the last several months? Yeah, I mean, she has, there are the designers who say they won't dress her and they probably won't dress her. However, more and more um, this week, Victoria Beckham came forward and said she would happily dress her. Uh, the man we're seeing now on the screen, Hervé Pierre, is her personal couturier. He designed her inaugural dress, and he helps her with styling. But I will say this about Melania Trump. She buys a lot of her clothes off the rack. So a designer mm -hmm. saying, I won't dress her, isn't as appropriate or, or applicable as you know, perhaps it was with Michelle Obama or Laura Bush or people who had real sort of custom-made clothes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just an interesting fact of the fashion world. Michael Kors is not a fan of, of the Trump administration. He campaigned for Hillary Clinton. But Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Trump does wear a lot of Michael Kors, but she buys it in a store. So it's a, it's a different the rank. thing. Yeah, that's, exactly. uh, that's really interesting. Kay Bennett, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for clearing up the conspiracy theory for us. <laughs> <Anytime. laughs> All right, coming up on this Saturday, Bill Weir travels to an ancient Egyptian city lost for years beneath the Mediterranean Sea. A preview of tonight's brand new The Wonder List up next. T Mobile's Unlimited now includes Netflix on us. That's right, Netflix on us. Get four unlimited lines for just 40 bucks each. Taxes and fees included. And now, Netflix included. So go ahead, binge on us. Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network. What started as a passion has grown into an enterprise. That's why I switched to the Spark Cash Card from Capital One. Now I'm earning unlimited 2% cash back on every purchase I make. Everything. What's in your wallet? Dynamic performance, so you can own the road. Aggressive style, so you can break away from everyone else. The bold Lexus IS. Experience amazing. COPD makes it hard to breathe. So to breathe better, I go with a normal. Go your own way. COPD tries to say go this way. I say I'll go my own way with the Noro. Go your own way. 
Once Daily Anoro contains two medicines called bronchodilators that work together to significantly improve lung function all day and all night. Anoro is not for asthma. It contains a type of medicine that increases risk of death in people with asthma. The risk is unknown in COPD. Anoro won't replace rescue inhalers for sudden symptoms and should not be used more than once a day. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition, high blood pressure, glaucoma, prostate, bladder, or urinary problems. These may worsen with Anoro. Call your doctor if you have worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain while taking Anoro. Ask your doctor about Anoro. Get your first prescription free at anoro.com. It's really difficult for me to get things done around the house. You know, I work six days a week. The last thing I want to do is spend time doing chores. I'd rather spend that time with my family. Tackle is the perfect app to handle hundreds of small chores when you just don't have the time. From housekeeping to lawn care to any other chores you need done around the house. Tackle has freed up my weekends and now I'm able to spend all this time with my family. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Life is too short. Download the Tackle app now and let's tackle it today. Close captioning brought to you by Mezzobook.com. We offer a free book on mesothelioma. Call for the free book and receive so much more. Call 1-800-831-3700. So could ancient artifacts predict a dark future? On tonight's brand new episode of The Wonderless, Bill Weir explores a sunken city that serves as a warning to the threat of rising sea levels. Here's a preview. The Corniche is Alexandria's popular seaside highway, a poignant backdrop for relic hunters like Eric, scuba-loving native of Key West, Florida. Sometimes you come to the surface on a calm day and you can see the people riding bikes or horse dog buggies, and, and you can hear their voices and see all those buildings, six million people. And yet here on the bottom is another city, the same city that disappeared. And it makes you wonder, do they know, do they think about it ever? Do they wonder? Welcome to Thonus Heraklion. Not the greatest visibility down here, but if not for this silty murk, looters would have picked it clean long ago. Fishermen have been dragging nets here forever, clueless to the columns, crockery, bones and ghosts just 20 feet below. We float in the belly of a ship sailed the Nile centuries before Cleopatra took her own life. That is just fascinating. <laughs> what he said, you know, the comparison, we see the people right. and the buildings, and then to think, sure. like, that existed, and now it's under the ocean. When you look at the pottery, when you hold a plate yeah. that hasn't been touched since uh, a woman set the table, you know, That's 1,300 crazy. years ago, and the family who were going to eat that dinner that night, they thought their city was Forever, you know, right. it was a huge, it was the second largest city after Cairo, and Alexander the Great actually built Alexandria to replace this city. My God, um, and it really is an eerie reminder of how vulnerable our right. cities exactly. are. Exactly, yeah. So there's a lot going on on that coast of Egypt. I mean, there's the political unrest you've seen and all of that, but what's happening to nature, uh, the Nile Delta is getting saltier as mm -hmm. the sea levels slowly creep up. And that, that, that is farmland that feeds 40 million people. It's the breadbasket of Africa and the Middle East. And so uh, every year the crops are getting a little bit shorter, but it also threatens these precious antiquities, mm -hmm. catacombs full of you know, priceless artifacts uh, are flooding more and more regularly. Um, but it, you know, if we don't study history, we're doomed to repeat it, you know, as yeah, the old cliche. Yeah, it happened before, it can happen it again, It can happen right? again, especially the projections that you see, so you got to prepare. Right, and just to be down there touching those old artifacts. I mean, it was really cool, yeah. And saying, before I let you go, I want to turn to just Puerto Rico, because sure. while you were working on this, you were also covering the breaking news after the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Yeah. We know that President Trump has said that, that his administration's efforts uh, are 10 out of 10. Right. But uh, when you go to talk to people on the ground there, it seems as though 
Uh, perhaps they don't agree with the president. There, there's a, a wide range of opinions yeah. given the reality of what's going on the ground. Well, look, our president uh, came up as a real estate salesman, and it'd be tough for him to sell a building where 20% of the apartments had electricity and half had water. You wouldn't rate that building as a 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. But the, the good news is within the last few days, it seems like the government has under, finally understood the need for the first time in a month. So mm -hmm. the last week, Everybody from line workers who were first ones down there trying to hook up uh, power lines and cell towers, they're saying we're finally seeing more troops, more guardsmen, more aid. And so it's, it's, it's going to take a lot more hope. It's Hopefully it keeps coming. Yeah. One month after the hurricane exactly. hit there. Bill yeah. Lear, thank you as always. Thanks, Appreciate it. And a new episode of The Wonder List airs next right here on CNN. That does it for me. I'm Pamela Brown. And we leave you with the Sam Moore performing Soul Man at a hurricane relief concert in Texas. I'm not going